This is the copper stock that I'm using for the thermal transfer fins. And this is some of the rest of the hardware that we'll be incorporating. These are the test drill holes. Turns out that a stepper drills, I should have known that'd be best for this from the get-go, but those make a pretty nice hole. Those are sliding over this interior conduit, which will be slid through this steel chamber. We are going to be painting the interior of this with many layers of primer and sealer paint to kind of provide a thermal insulation because we don't want to lose a lot of heat to this steel pipe. It'll reach an average temperature but it won't get hot and cold as quickly with the insulation on it so that'll mitigate some of the thermal losses of this particular kinetic actuator design. I'm not going to be going with this design. I am going to use it to test the characteristics of certain fluids possibly maybe not it was kind of a pain to make this um, I am going to test it out anyway just to see how it does it was cheap this is about a twenty dollar device right here this is one of the kinetic act actuator formats that I had considered and I have another one somewhere over here This one here is a rather expensive This one right here is way too expensive and even after I finish it it would only be a 70 milliliter unit that's just too small the concept is good and it does demonstrate a particular way of doing this using a cheap outer casing on the outer thermal transfer of the heat exchange in between these two pipes is where the expansion fluid is another pipe will be going inside of this which is the pipe of the same diameter of this one here but even with the addition of this extra kinetic actuator inside of this particular heat exchange, I only get another 30 milliliters. I believe this here was about 40, and that there's about 30. So 70 milliliters is just not enough for a $100 piece of equipment. This one here, the parts here, came out to about almost the same. This copper sheet was the most expensive of all. You're looking at about $30, $35 right there. And $3 for the pipe. So about the same, but it's got about 100 times the fluid capacity, maybe more. So definitely saving some money there. This is 40 cooling fins that will be added to the thermal conduit this piece here I don't know if I'm going to use more than 40 or less yet I'm worried that if they're spaced too close together they wouldn't be able to conduct the heat provided by the cross-sectional area they're attached to they may have to be spaced like a half inch to thermodynamically be efficient I'm going to look into some of those calculations they do exist. They're pretty cool actually. Okay, in this phase I am attaching the thermal conductive fins using a very special torch. Can't really zoom in on that flame well, but it has a very distinctive blue inner cone in there. And I'm using an oxyhydrogen gas modification setup where I have propane being injected into an oxyhydrogen torch. And it just makes a very powerful small flame. It can go smaller, but I kind of like the size I got now. 
It's a quick heat up. Pure hydrogen alone tends to cause some type of oxida oxidation on the copper that the flux can't really eliminate very well. So the propane not only gives you a far higher heat capacity than the hydrogen flame alone, but it has other benefits as far as soldering are concerned. So that's why I use the dual gas setup. fin lightly attached conducts so much heat it burns my hands when I touch it. It's already scolding hot. Way too much solder that time. I am exhaling every time the cloud of acid flux fumes rise into my face. No problem there. Okay, hydrogen torch is heating up. I gotta put a fan on it. So you get an idea of the process. It's going to need some combing when I'm done, but... Okay, we were looking at constituents of my most advanced kinetic actuator design prior to construction. I wanted to get an idea of what this stuff looks like. And we have it on file before it all goes together. And some of the interesting thermodynamic calculations I did on this thermal conduit with uh, DQ divided by DT. Turns out that because I use lead solder, I'm actually limited to 18,000 watts at a 5.5 millimeter thickness of solder. As you can see on this unit, there's quite a bit of lead solder. It's actually a tin lead alloy, and I did not look at the thermal conductivity constant of tin but I think for a test apparatus this will suffice but again if it were all copper the tube alone would be capable of transferring 149,000 watts a second at a 50 degree temperature change I believe this is a 56 square centimeter surface area if you were to cut this pipe and unwrap it that seems wrong but that's what I came up with when I calculated it. Um, unfortunately, when I did the calculation, though, I accidentally used the external diameter as a reference. So these calculations are slightly off. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out real quick is you'll notice that I've painted the inside of the kinetic actuator because I want it to be insulated from the pressure vessel. Um, this is Schedule 40 galvanized pipe, I believe, and it is rated at 1300 PSI. And if I have it insulated from the activities inside, it will reach an average temperature and stay at that temperature within the temperature cycling. Rather than getting really hot and getting really cold and being subjected to thermal stresses as well as kinetic stresses or static stresses, as they are called, I'm going to be connecting this 5,000 PSI gauge to the device. I'm not going to get it anywhere near that high. I, mean, I am going to try to bring it up to 1,000 PSI's. And what I've gone ahead and done is decided to forego any Teflon. 
and just soldered the fittings. I did attempt to make it a point to enable this device to bleed itself properly. So I made sure not to drive in these elbow fittings past the actual top surface area so that any bubbles trapped will escape during the bleeding process. This is the volumetric flow booster pump. This connection point here is a high pressure connection that will be connected to one of these apertures. And our high pressure low flow will be converted to a low pressure high flow more suitable for running common hydraulic pumps. It is not typical to run a 5,000 psi hydraulic pump at 80 milliliters per minute, you know what I mean? So that is the purpose of the booster, is to bring the flow up to practical rates or pragmatic rates, I'm not sure how you would phrase that. Down here we are looking at a total cost of $71. Now that does not include labor or the paint. And I may have been missing a few things, but for contrast, I have a hundred dollar actuator. This particular actuator cost a hundred dollars and is far from complete and is a mere 70 milliliters. So Although it may be capable of flash cycling or really quickly going from hot to cold, it's a poor design. It would cost thousands of dollars to make a 10 horsepower engine. This here is a huge volume. What will happen is the thermal conduit will be inside of the device. and end capped and soldered there like that. That joint right there will be soldered. As well as all the copper compression fittings. I think they're rated at like 500 or 600 PSI's, I'm not sure. So here it is, the kinetic actuator. I haven't soldered it at that joint yet.